from the May conference, we, we came with 10 action points, Dublin declaration on, on what are the key issues to be fostered on a European basis. And I, well, you have here the full list, and for sure you will have the full presentation, so I, I skip the list as such, just highlighting some of those. One of the key things is really to create a European innovation ecosystem, and of course, when going down in the granularity, it's, it's to create also local innovation ecosystems where you have different kinds of organizations, but you see also the small different colors, dots, individuals as part of, of the creation of the new market. You have leaking funnels, you have more, I would say, strict funnels there, but what is really important is that in this ecosystem you do not see any a priori determined structures. It's really like a porridge where you, or soup, where you put all the ingredients in, ranging from the real world setting, the, the users, involvement to academic, to public, to, to industry. And all of, all of us have a role in that. Uh, when we are looking at uh, the innovation drivers today, we are, are very much speaking about platform competitiveness. Can we develop that kind of platforms which are fostering this kind of cross-fertilization in an effective way? And, and that, again, highlights the, the importance of daring to innovate, daring to invest in, in disruptive innovation and architectural innovation. Because otherwise we are, are entering a, again into the linear innovation model where we are extrapolating the future based on, on the past. And it's not any more about that. Of course you can have incremental improvements but it's not what we are, are looking for. Quadruple helix innovation, I, th I think, is, is a word which should be really be understood in, in innovation policies and innovation actions. How to really look at the citizen, the civic society, as one of the active agents in, in the innovation process, creating the future market, together with the other actors. We have heard plenty of, of the triple helix where we have the three first components, but really users need to be active agents and not any more passive subjects, uh, passive objects for, for, the, for the whole process. How to grab on the intellectual capacity of everyone? How to develop, let's say Dublin, to, to a site where you can really test and verify experiment with real-world people on entirely new, new things, new products and services. So innovation adoption matters. And how to make that fast happen fast means again that when you go and do actually your research and development in real-world settings, you very fast see what is successful, what is not. You fail fast but you do not fail in the big things. And I think that is, again, cost-effective. You are really seeing how to progress and what to do. Kill bad experiences soon and, and do not just bang your head against the wall. So again, we also in our research program are en encouraging experimentation and rapid prototyping in, in real world setting. As you know, the European approach has very much been planning perfectly for yesterday. We do not have that time anymore. We really don't. And then what we also stated very clearly in, in, in Dublin half a year ago was really that the high expectation entrepreneurship is driving the whole society forward. So again, looking at entrepreneurship and how you can do spin-offs from enterprises, universities, or just bring even entrepreneurship to, to the citizen has a really, really big importance. One technology job is related to, depending on the statistics, but around four other jobs in society. And then last but not least, it's really about 
creating that mashup process, intersectional, have very, very rich flora of, of different kinds of competencies merging. Because you never know which combination will be the successful one. And again, as I said, from, from Dublin perspective, from Irish perspective, how do you make yourself attractive for all kinds of talents to merge here and, and develop further? Then a couple of words before, before ending on, on the horizon 2020. It is a, we could say, next wave of our research programs for the next seven years. The budget will be around 70 billion. But again, what I would like to say is that it is transforming also the EU research policy actions to, towards, I would say, to innovation direction. Uh, we have one part is, is on, on societal challenges, the ICT is in there, and, and roughly you could say half of our actions are going directly to, to innovation. Uh, Pre-commercial pro procurement, and of course there I would like to, to give the hook to, to public authorities, use our top-up funding for procuring those kind of solutions which do not yet exist, and involve the citizens in that as well, so you can really use these instruments as, as creating, for creating something new. For the industrial part, we also have entirely new, new instruments focusing very much on the rapid prototyping, experimenting in real-world settings. Uh, what is really important is really to, to see that we want to make the research programs from ideation and research to something which is, is innovation. And we really do think that, that experimentation prototyping is the right approach. But of course it means also for our research community and industrial community that they must be proud, or no, proud enough, self-confident enough to admit that they fail in something. Because again, that's part of the approach. On the other hand, you can say that if you are successful in absolutely everything you do, your ambition level is far too low. So I would say there has to be failures. Because then you are really putting to, to perform at, at your utmost level. Pre-commercial procurement. Well, you can probably identify from this slide some interesting ideas uh, which could be, again, subject to, to public procurement together with those sectors you would like to, to make attractive here in Ireland. And prizes. Inducement prizes seem to be very, very powerful tools because uh, there are some prize, uh, prizes run in the United States where the effect has been tenfold to the whole research and innovation community compared to the prize money. And we will now, as uh, part of the next framework, try prizes, inducement prizes of, of different categories. Of course, it's an experiment for us as well, but again, what I think is important is that we do not determine the path how to get the result, nor the consortium, nothing. We just, we just say that this is the objective. Those who can perform best, come to the solution first, will get the prize. Which is, well, causing grey hair for our administrators, but uh, quite an interesting exercise for sure. Regarding the program itself, uh, we will be able to publish the, the work program in, in Vilnius in, in November, so in, in, in one month from now, and the first calls will be operational early next year. So I certainly welcome to you to, to look at these, look at these calls from the European level, how to support your own ambitions to make you one of the interesting hub hubs on those topics you want to be attracted towards in the world. There are many new possibilities and really fostering directly the Innovation 2.0. We are not that prescribing 
in, in our, our research policies anymore as, as we used to be. Please take the advantage of, of that. Participate, please. Thank you.